Welcome to Thought Cops, coming to you live from the main streets of Neo Chicago. I am Officer Kevin. How you doing, Officer Kevin? Grant, how, how are you, you today? Thank you what so you much for up? asking me. That is so kind of you to ask. I am doing fan fucking tastic. Fine. And, and you're doing. How are you? I don't care. Uh, Seven hundred subscribers we're up to on YouTube. Wow! It only Ooh. took us six years. Holy crap! <laughs> I mean, to be fair, again, I still think that our audio feed is still uh, the more popular of the oh yeah, types yeah. Of feed compared to the video feed. But uh, the video feed is getting out there. We got people looking mm-hmm. at our views. Uh, do we got people looking at our viewing our videos, viewing the giving us views? Can we start over? And look yeah. at there. Slowly. <laughs> yeah, and the views are going up, and uh, within. 10 seconds of us dropping a video, uh, we have 100 angry comments and people are like, <laughs> hey, Kevin, that's not a very good impression of the mask. Hey, come on. Now. Maybe maybe work on that a little bit. The dream, baby. That's what I get for putting hashtag Elon Musk in the description, <laughs> but we'll get to that later. Yeah. Uh, let's give a warm welcome to a brand new guest on the show because today we got Fudge. How's it going, Fudge? What's up? Hello. Thanks. Thanks, you guys, for having me. Uh, Should I call uh, you Fudge or Brad? Uh, Brad, Brad is fine. Oh, uh, fuck. Okay. You know, no, it's fine. Literally, either is oh, fine. Oh, fuck. A lot of people, because the spelling is weird, a lot of people have, uh, like, not intuited that it is fudge and called me Food J, uh, Fudge, and any number of say things. That oh. how you spell it is how I pronounce the word fudge. Like, it just. Bad. Yeah. Just well, I'm I'm glad I'm the one who introduced him. Thank fucking God. Yeah, How's it yeah. going, Brad? If you called me footage, I would have stormed off the show immediately. I'm good. <laughs> I would um, never. Very uneventful. Like, literally. I mean, the most eventful thing that's happened to me recently is, is, is I think, probably the main reason I'm here, which is that I've taken over the um the hard drive YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And which I wanted to ask you about. Was I, this like when that woman went into YouTube headquarters with guns? And uh, was it anything like that when you yeah, took it no, over? Yeah, no, actually, exactly. I actually took a lot of inspiration from that. I showed up with a few uh, samurai swords dressed as, uh, uh, you know, some people might refer to me as an otaku. Um, but I, I right. threatened the head of hard drive at Blade Point. To let me take over the the YouTube yeah, channel. front of the show, Jeremy. Yes, yeah. Um, we had a fight to Lincoln Parks in the end, uh, and I won by sending to my second form, and now I run the YouTube channel. Yeah, I've seen that AMV before. It's awesome. It's pretty sick. Yeah, I was pretty happy with uh, my editor who was there with a the camera. <laughs> also, listen, Brad, thank you for yes ending that. My God, <laughs> Grant set you up with that one. Um, so yeah, uh, you are a hard drive writer turned hard uh, head of the hard drive YouTube channel. Brad, how the heck did you manage that? Uh, well, I, I, uh, I was really annoying about it. Actually, that's my little bit of life advice from a 25 year old here tip mm. for life. If you want something in life, you've just got to be really annoying about it. That is actually, I think a genuinely good piece of advice, like not annoying, but be persistent. Like don't, you know, yeah, like, yeah. You know, you're not wrong. You're not wrong at all. Know that you're ready to, to take something on. So, um, I basically, obviously I do my own YouTube channel. I did fudge for a while. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got really big back in the day off of this kind of video essay style stuff. My biggest thing was a video about um, Smash Ultimate and how I think it fucking sucks. And how yeah, really- yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. That's goofed, uh, man. Yeah, how, how could you hate that game? I haven't seen the full video. I do want to say Dude, there's 170. Th- it's the uh, ultimate showdown of ultimate destiny. Well, it's bigger, less. so I guess it's better, right? I mean, it's not, you know, it doesn't right. have Shackle or Batman exactly. or anything. Exactly. But. Yeah, it's no multiverses, but no, because I, I know, like, um, you know, mm-hmm. there, there's a lot of very talented people in the hard drive, like writer server, and then you know, sometimes I'm, like people will be like doing their own stuff, and I'll check out other people's content because it's like I, I have, for example, I have this podcast. We have like our friend Slime does music. A lot of other people do a lot of other things, and I said you had a YouTube channel, and I go to your YouTube channel, pretty big following too, and I, I watched a good handful of your videos, and I found them, you know, to be very entertaining. So then when I found out that you were going to be, you know, going to be taking over the hard drive YouTube channel, I was like, that's a, that's a good idea because for the most part, it wasn't really being used all that much. And for a long time, I was like, why are we not doing anything more with this? You know, they did like Jeremy had filmed a couple of really funny videos, but it felt like there was more we could be doing. Shout out to uh, just a real quick interjection. Shout out to the video where he does like a vlogger video. That's like, uh, hey, subscribers, it's me, dad. Yeah, Thanks for joining good. the dad crew. It's like, man, I fucking love this. <laughs> I, uh, I really love he did a He did a fucking great. Um, it was the uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator video where it's uh, 
Microsoft is a review of Microsoft Flight Simulator, and it's about how <laughs> Microsoft Flight Simulator is so realistic that my son is still dead in it. <laughs> he, he flies over his own son's grave. That's amazing. <laughs> and at the end, he crashes his plane into the building of the glue company that somehow killed his son. Oh it's my! It's really good. I was saying this to Jeremy in my initial pitch. Like, you guys have done some awesome stuff. The problem isn't actually the content. Like, it's not that <clears throat> what you've been doing isn't funny or entertaining, mm. but it's that. <clears throat> sorry, in my throat. Uh, YouTube is like changing. Um, content is changing. I hate the word content now. I'm so sick of it. I'm sure you guys are. I, yeah, hundred percent. But the thing is, the unfortunate fact of the matter is, and this is something I kind of learned the hard way, is that no one on YouTube or really on any kind of video sharing platform, I don't think, is tuning in for what they know will be anywhere from ten minutes plus of jokes. Everyone has to get something out of a video nowadays, even if its primary intention is to be funny. It can't just be funny. That's what I've learned, and I hate that. I wish I wish we could just do silly shit for for half an hour or more, and people want to watch that. Well, but, see, Grant, this is what happened with us. We are too funny, <laughs> and nobody. Yeah, there's. I mean, well, uh, there's a there's a lot of things with this we try and do a lot with this show but um that's sort of uh i mean weirdly enough that's sort of what i've been doing with uh the sub stack that i have uh which yeah. is we're up to 20 subscribers over on Substack, by the way hey now uh, but i'm i'm doing the same thing where it's like i'm trying to write comedically but i'm there's like a point to it you know because the, the point is engaging and people want to engage with certain topics but if you know it, you can turn on, you know, uh, UPN and see reruns of the Three Stooges smacking pies in each other's faces. And I'm like, I, I'm already set. I don't need that. I need. Why is that not on behind you right now? Because I'm not fucking magic, Kevin, because I'm not a wizard in Hogwarts with a little wand waving my wand saying expecto Stooges. Grant, you literally own a remote. You have a wand for your TV. Do, 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 do. What, what are we talking about? You um, again? So, yeah, like the thing is that um, I, I saw, like you, Kevin, I saw that they hadn't been really been using their YouTube channel, which kind of blew my mind because I was like, yeah, oh, yeah. Funny, creative people like this, how are we not doing video? You know? Mm -hmm. um, and my channel, after, uh, after I kind of blew up off the back of this Smash stuff, um, everyone kind of expected, I think, more essay style, more straight to the point, serious stuff yeah. from me. And that's not really who I am. You know, I'm a, I'm a down to my core. I'm a goofy guy. I'm a silly man who likes telling japes and, and, and chuckling and simpering and all these other things. And I felt like I had kind of pigeonholed myself by making this one video that blew up. And then all of a sudden that's kind of all people wanted. And I wanted to, I wanted to do silly, more satirical shit. And sure, uh, sure. after like a year or so of decline, uh, you know, I've, I've moved out, um, in the past like year and a half, uh, this, mm -hmm. this flat is like relatively new and I need to be able to afford it. And my YouTube channel as it was, was not bringing in the money I needed to sustain myself. So I kind of did a bit of a hail Mary where I first DM Jeremy, um, and said to him, Hey, like I noticed that I've been a, been a hard drive fan for a while. Cause I have, I, I've, I've loved them for a long time. I think what they do is awesome. Um, uh, and I noticed that your YouTube channel hasn't been, uh, used very much recently. It's kind of gone dormant. What do you think of the potential of, of of bringing someone on to kind of take over? You know, and uh, I don't want to like. I think it'd be unprofessional to kind of like dox too many details of our conversation and whatnot. You know, I'd, you know, I'll leave out all the news that we exchanged and everything. But I'll say that he was very polite. Um, but um, kind of said we don't really have a ton of money right now, and um, you know, he wasn't against the idea, but I think he was kind of unsure. And I thought, okay. Um, I mean, it's a big decision. Uh, yeah. You can't just yeah. be like, yeah, let's just overhaul the entire thing. Yeah. Exactly. It's a big thing that I, I probably should never have expected him to be able to just say yes or no by himself, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I started doing a bit more looking into the company, like a proper stalker. And uh, I found out who the guy, like actually the, the founder and CEO, uh, who Matt was. And I thought yeah, Matt Matt Sankom? Yes. He's yeah. been awesome. They've both been awesome to me. I, I, uh, I, liaise with matt and jeremy a lot and i, I couldn't be happier with the the freedom they give me mm -hmm. i followed matt on twitter and eventually i saw him i'd also emailed matt at some point and again the conversation also fell through perfectly polite and he sounded interested in my pitch 
but I've come to realize since I joined Hard Drive just how fucking busy those guys are, like how much they do. So it's no surprise that these conversations fell through. Um, eventually, I saw Matt on Twitter kind of throw out a casting call for um, he wanted guide writers for a new experiment he was doing, which was with mine as well, Hard Drive Sister Site. They yeah, mm -hmm. game guides and stuff. Um, specifically, he wanted uh, guide writers for multiverses, which had only come out pretty recently and was very big. Um, and given my background in competitive Smash, which is what the Smash Ultimate video is rooted in, I used to be a competitive player. Mm. Yeah, um, I figured I'd be the perfect person. And actually, one of my followers had literally just sent me a, a beta code for multiverses while I was playing it earlier than everyone. So if I, I, if I got a beta code, I'd be like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, where's my Sigma code? Yeah. Well, you know, me and Kevin already have our Sigma codes, Grant. You must not have got yours, I'm afraid. Yeah, I, I'm too busy over here in alpha territory, I guess. True, true. We don't we don't cross pollinate too much because we, we're not trying to cramp each other's styles. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I me I emailed that, uh, Matt with my whole dick out, like, yo, I have literally everything you possibly want. You know, I like I have a background in competitive play, I have a fucking early code. I am, I will bend over backwards to write these things and just get in. And he was like, yeah, fuck it. Let's do it. I knew, I knew I was in when he, he emailed me literally just an email that said LFG as in like, let's fucking go. And I was like, I do with a, did you have to Google that? Like, what does LFG mean? Sorry. Did you have to like Google that when you got it? Like, what does no, LFG I mean? Yeah. Okay. okay. That's what I would have done. I'd be like, Oh God, I hope that's good news. Yeah. No, I, I, uh, I knew I was in when a guy with a Wikipedia article emailed me LFG. I was like, yeah. Nice. Um, so I got my start writing guys for multiverses. Uh, you know, how to play as Bugs Bunny, throw a pie, shoot a rocket, get in the hole, you know, do all this shit. Um, and I was doing that for a while, but I had the ulterior motive of eventually, like, you know, the whole time in my head, I was like, one day I'm going to DM him and be like, yo, here's my actual pitch. Let me do the video stuff. Um, sure. But I, I thought, I don't want to kind of try and climb the ladder too fast and uh, be a, an opportunist or whatever. So I'll do this for a while. Sometimes was, you have to, though, like you said, you have to be an annoying opportunist and it does go, you know, like speaking of like that, like I, I like I mentioned on the show before, I used to intern at The Onion a long time ago, like nine, oh, really? years, yeah, nine years ago. Wow. Uh, I worked for the team who like wrote the videos there, like Onion News Network. Oh, and, sure. you know, over time, they've kind of slowly phased that out. But then that was what I was thinking of with hard drive, because I'm like The Onion, obviously very similar, you know, website has a YouTube presence, big thing. And I'm like. It seems natural for a hard drive to also have that. But I was going to say, I got that job by being very fucking annoying. I applied for the internship, like must've been like 20 times. And they're like, Oh, we see you applied a lot during the interview. I'm like, Oh yeah, yeah. I really want to work here. Yeah. I got it. I, I guess we should, we should clarify that. Like when we say being annoying, we are being a bit like exaggerative, but like definitely seem eager, you know, be persistent. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody right. take that the wrong way and like show up like, you know, obnoxious it's yeah. not obnoxious yeah, oh, yeah obnoxious. there's a big distinction yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. annoying versus obnoxious there is right. there is a distinction in there somewhere you parse it out yourself it's the difference between like dming someone on twitter and like popping out of a fucking manhole cover or getting on the same bus you know <laughs> i mean yeah, i wouldn't i wouldn't count that out though that's kind of a no? that's a maybe whole majima I move if you're trying to prove to a guy that you could be funny content man maybe maybe you should, maybe you should pop out of a manhole cover and get on the same bus yeah you know but on a sexy ladies dress uh seductively chew on a carrot and say hey <laughs> let me write for multiverses <laughs> yeah yeah um so i was writing for multiverses for a while my my um my my foremost memory from that time which was uh kind of late last year um between like august and november will be that um whilst i was midway through writing a guide for how to play as taz and multiverses the queen died oh boy god rest was her weird. soul it was very hard to focus on, you know, Taz. <laughs> how to play as the Tasmanian <laughs> in multiverses when the fucking queen died. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you guys like realize, like, um, obviously she's a big deal in the world, like worldwide, but um, the protocol for when the queen dies in England, what is and was insane. Um, every, they, they have like literally, there's, there's YouTube videos about like what they do when the queen dies. And, uh, at some point, a phone call is made to London Bridge and they say London Bridge has fallen or like London Tower has fallen. They have a code phrase, which means the monarch is dead. And then when they receive that order, all the radio stations in the country change to sad music 
all the TV stations dun, change dun, to the dun, news dun, 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 and uh, dun, dun. shops and businesses close in the morning, you know? Wow. Yeah. So it's very hard to know all that is going on outside of you while straying. Use the spin move because it's really good, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, I went outside just to <coughs> get a vibe of the place. I live like right in town. So literally I can walk less than five minutes and be in, be in town. And uh, I went outside just to see what it was like, what the mood and atmosphere was like. And it was weird. It was quiet, you know, like billboards and lights were off and people were just walking around with these solemn looks in their faces. Fucking weird ass, backwards ass country. That's like crazy. You guys had your own 9-11, except it we was, did. Uh, <laughs> instead of a couple thousand people, it was uh, just just one. Honestly, last year was like one big 9-11 in slow motion. It was like a third, fourth, and fifth plane hit the towers. It was. <laughs> I think it will go down as the craziest year in the history of like British politics, because the Queen died, but also, I don't know if you guys know about Boris Johnson and Liz Truss and whatnot, but... Um, have you guys heard those names? Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Liz Truss is now who who became prime minister the last year is now the shortest reigning British prime minister in history. Um, we've had more British prime ministers than there's been US presidents. To put that into perspective, mm. she was prime minister for less than two months for forty something days, uh, and she stepped down after that period because she was literally so shit that the pressure on her to go was that monumental. Um, I wouldn't like it either. I don't think I'd be very good. No, I'd probably quit. That's You're why you fine. didn't run, Kevin. What was that? That's why you didn't run to be prime minister. Well, yeah, I, I had the foresight not to. I mean, she yes. should have done the same. Exactly. Smart. That's I mean, the difference between you and Liz Truss. You'd have to be a complete buffoon to want to run to, for that uh, that level of power. You know, I, any that's that's what I say all the time. Anybody uh, that wants that type of power inherently a psychopath. Uh, yeah. yeah, which is why I vote Republican every year. <laughs> um, you guys have like a weird system over there, though, too, where it's like, okay, the person that steps down, it's not like like we have like president, vice president. If the president minecrafts or whatever, then the vice president's like, okay, well, I'm I'm here, and then we'll do another election. But y'all like seem to. Uh, I feel like this has been the trend, maybe the past couple uh, election cycles, is that someone steps down, the person within the party gets elevated back up to prime minister. They win re-election because they're an incumbent. And then something happens and then they step down and then the party in power picks someone from their party to become prime minister. And then they win re-election, but then something bad happens and then they step down and it's like, I, I can't get election reform to work in this country, but uh, y'all need to consider some alternatives. Yeah, yeah. Pre presidential versus Prime ministerial like uh, forms of government are they're both. I mean, I, I don't think there's a single even good system like that. You know, uh, I probably get, would get rid of those rulers. No gods, no masters. Yeah, no, we should descend into anarchy. But yeah. for now, I think presidential is probably. I probably prefer that to prime ministerial, like the set four years, um, because it has just been chaos in the UK for the last couple of years. But uh, anyway, I digress. Yeah, there was chaos going on. I'm writing these guides. Uh, Taz, yes. Taz, yeah, right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, ta the Tasmanian Devil. Uh, eventually, uh, the time comes, the time is right, and I DM Matt with my whole pitch, and I tell him, like, I could take over the Hard Drive YouTube channel, here's a bunch of stuff I could do, and um, we had a very brief Zoom call where he was just like, he was really cool, he was like really accepting of my ideas, and I was just talking at like fucking 500 words a minute, like, I want this pitch to work so bad, and then it seemed like he was just kind of on board with it since the start, and I just kept going. I kept going. I felt a bit embarrassed. Mm. But he was like, could you make me something that you would make for the Hard Drive YouTube channel? I said, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I made what is now the first video on the Hard Drive YouTube channel of the reboot, which is um, Hard Drive Reviews Resident Evil 4, which I'm very happy with. It. <laughs> Wait, hold, can I, can I uh, pause for a sec? So, Grant, do you remember last episode when we got a voicemail about like a Resident Evil 4 video? Yeah. And you know how that person like now has my phone number because uh, oh, yeah, I called yeah. him back. So like after the episode came out with Frank, because remember he he's like, I saw your Resident Evil Four video. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, I mean, Frank, did you make a Resident Evil Four video? He's like, No, but I like the game. And that guy texts me and he goes like, Oh shit, I thought that was for the Fudge episode. <laughs> <laughs> so that I didn't realize until because he was referring to your hard drive video from right. Resident Evil did Four. We so even announce. 
I think it's like I think the, this guy's in our Discord because I think remember like oh, I mentioned yeah, like yeah, the yeah. upcoming month of guests we had planned, oh. and he mixed up uh, Frank Holly and Fudge I guess back and back or well, Brad. I watched this episode by the way. I I saw this and I didn't know what he was talking about. Either. No, it it didn't click until like uh I don't it didn't click until later on actually, and I was like, what? I'm like, oh yeah. shit, yeah. So I did this Resident Evil 4 video. I was really happy with it. I thought it was one of my best things I've done. And uh, clearly Matt and Jeremy agreed. And uh, I kind of got the gig from there, you know? Um, I'm now managing it. I've helped reboot it. We've designed a bunch of art assets for stuff. We've started uh, promoting it a lot more. Yeah, it's uh, very snazzy. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, my my flatmate who lives with me, he works upstairs. He works for an actual news company, uh, mm-hmm. Pink News, which is like an LGBTQ plus news organization. And he is their graphic designer. Um, so like if I ever need art elements, I can be like, yo, can you hit me up with, you know, like that's awesome. Yeah. Literally, uh, I made a joke about it because he he works at Pink News, the hard drive for those themselves is punk news. And he works up <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. Pink news upstairs and punk punk news downstairs. Pink and punk, pink and punk. Yeah, yeah, they go together beautifully. So um, you you kind of like I, I feel like you were able to pivot over pretty well because I, I was gonna ask you like what what we because you know you mentioned like you this is more comedic and humorously toned than your old channel was it hard for you to kind of move over to this new venue or was it kind of seamless or it's been pretty seamless i think because it's what i wanted you know um, yeah and I, you also kind of kept your persona like you have that uh what well, your avatar is what like a, a, a pink crying seal like right barney yeah. the dinosaur I oh i oh. hate that guy barney that make yeah, it Eh. I would never watch that show. By the way, I'm just clarifying for anybody. Yeah, I don't watch. I don't watch it either. That that'd be very embarrassing. That is a show for babies. I do not watch it. Yeah, no, me too. I, I mean, also, I'm not. Why did you? Why did you bring it up then? No, I mean, I just was thinking like, oh, well, thinking about Barney. That would be like an example of like a thing. I was just thinking, oh, like what's what's a (laughs) stupid? What's a real stupid thing to say? Mm -hmm. Barney. Can I say I'm a huge I'm, Barney fan? I feel pretty judged right now. <laughs> I mean, he is smart. I've never watched a single out. episode, actually. Ever? Uh, just like once, maybe. But oh, uh, n- not even when you were like a baby. No, um, I mean, like sometimes, but like no. Yeah, yeah. Like no, I never. Uh, what does he even do? What's his thing? Yeah, he walks he's around. He's a pedophile. <laughs> Okay, thanks. <laughs> I mean, he's like, oh, well, hey. no, no, Barney's not a pedophile, just the guy in the suit. Well, yeah, but this the guy in the suit. He's like, hey, kids, you know that uh, that stuffed animal that sits in the corner over there? Uh, Ta da! That's me. I'm magic. Let's all play doctor. <laughs> oh my god! That's okay, the premise of the show. Anyway. <laughs> And it's for babies. Anyway, it. Br- oh, 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 sorry, shall I show the fuck? No, Brad. Brad's uh, avatar, to be clear, is not fucking Barney. <laughs> not Barney. I'm not Barney. Couldn't be further from All the right. fucking truth. Well, I wasn't saying that you were. Never mind. It's a seal, right, Brad? It's a crying seal. Yeah, there's this. There's this image, like a meme picture, or like a reaction image of uh, mm. a seal with like. Really watery eyes looks like so baked that I saw a long time ago that just really made me laugh. I don't know. I had no idea for what I wanted to do for the picture of the channel. Uh, so I said to my flatmate, Could you draw me this but make it silly and cartoonish and funny? Mm-hmm. And there it is, caught on. Uh, a lot of people mistake it, but that's what it is. Um, there is a slight concern that, like, I don't actually know the origin of the image that it's based on. If the seal is just like having a funny, like, allergic reaction or something, or I don't know, something if, if he's on drugs, I don't know. It, that's funny, but if I discover that like that's actually a crying seal and he's going through great distress, I'll be really upset and have really looked back at the last few years of my career as like, oh god, I've fucking used this seal as suffering. Well, the the internet has been laughing at that image for so long, and we don't know like what was said to the seal to provoke such a emotional reaction. No, but so, you were able to kind of like keep that persona. Like, cause in the, in the videos, you still refer to yourself as fudge and you have that little icon in the video. So it feels like it was like, you were able to jump from one thing to another as like a, you're like, a, like fudge is sort of like your, your correspondent persona, your correspondent Sona. Yeah. Uh, I, I would describe like, I think you guys can agree with this, right? And I think you guys said in the, on the podcast last time that you guys do this, but when you're, when you're, when you're, when you're in content mode, you basically mm-hmm. just take yourself and turn it up to 11, right? Um, yeah, pretty much, yeah. I don't know. I've been grappling with that. Well, I don't know. It's hard to say. Not eleven, maybe like maybe like eight. Some days nine. 
Okay. Somebody well, six. In in my instance, I'm I'm definitely turning myself up to eleven. I think uh, I think Fudge is quite pretentious, quite full of himself. He's just a bit of a cunt. Uh, he's constantly talking down to people, but also being the fucking idiot himself and like missing blatantly obvious things, mispronouncing names, shit like that. Yeah. Um, which uh, I have, like, I, I went to university, I have a writing degree, uh, I am a bit of an art snob myself. Um, you know, I, I, I will admit to, quite often I'll see a YouTube video and I recommend it or watch something uh, or just look at other people's work. And I'll admit, you know, I, I turn my nose up, it, I get snooty, I go, oh, I can't believe this fucking idiot's doing this or thinking Can't believe you've done this, yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know, at the end of the day, we live in 2023, that's content, baby. Everything's yeah. Content. Yeah, I mean, like you're you're you know to to use a uh, a British parlance, you're taking the piss out of things like Harry Potter. Yeah. What do you do with the piss after you have it? I actually store it in little jars uh, for when it gets hot. So that's what they're talking about. Okay. Keep a uh, My Little Pony figurine. Yeah. Uh, jar. Yeah. I put it right next to my Belle Delphine bath water. I, yeah. I can see. I can see you've used Reddit, good sir. You you can. Yes, I don't know. Is that a Reddit thing, Grant? Uh, His jars. Oh, wait, I thought you were being honest. I was like, I thought you. Just oh no, it. no. When I when I'm doing that voice, I'm Ooh. sort of like that's me, what? like hiding my vulnerability. I'm like, yeah. is that your? Yeah. <laughs> if I hide behind the silly voice I, I and I make a it. mistake, it's okay because I'm doing I'm being silly. Right. I do a lot of when I do that online. I like misspell things, but then people don't understand. People think that I'm really misspelling things and that I'm stupid. Um, so it just, it's bad all around, but I, I, I always, attri- I always think of the, the jar thing more as more of like a Justin Wang thing than like a Reddit yeah. thing. Like I, f- I feel like he, he deserves some level of ownership, like at least the my little pony ownership. jar. Yeah. It's my just, I have to twirl my mustache if I'm doing a Justin Wang impression. I, I literally know like. Justin Wang as the mustache guy on Twitter who, who occasionally tweets things that people like. Yeah. 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 He hasn't retweeted me in a while, Grant. What's going on with that? Me neither. I guess I'm just not saying anything of of value. That's true. I, if Justin Wang retweeted it's not fucking worth anything, right? Yeah, if it's like... Sometimes I put stuff out there, I'm like, I wonder if he's going to retweet this, and then he does, and I'm like, I think I figured it out, and then I just kind of stopped using Twitter as much, and I'm like, I don't just, get this uh, Just, like, tweet a picture of, like, an e-girl. He'll just retweet. He'll do that. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe I'll try that later. Yeah. Uh, Grant, what is, what is this you have in the Google Doc here that you're highlighting oh, back yeah. and forth? Uh, oh, no, I just I have a habit of just highlighting back and forth just to keep like the window active. No, I, I'm um, just wondering what it is. What, what is it? What well, is yeah, it? I, I wanted you to typed know, here. I wanted to know Fudge's opinion here on uh, Kevin's Bowser video. Is it up to snuff? Is the history of uh, Bowser's children is is it as he says that it is or is it not? You know, in the name of content, I'm sorry to disappoint and say that I don't really have an opinion on it and that it's fine, you know? Oh, thank God. And I think Kevin, I'm oh, pretty sure Kevin agrees. I don't think he really ever really cared too much for it. It's just a video where you talk about it. Yeah, yeah. I, I know I, I ran it by you because you did a video that I really enjoyed. It was like uh, the Donkey Kong Jr. What, right, what is the so title of that again? Watching, I was watching that and I was like, oh, what do, what do you think about Kevin's video? Yeah. Uh, well, no, I, I pitched that to Brad because I messaged him on Twitter because I'm like, Hey, I did this like random TikTok. Like I never fucking do TikTok, but I did one the other day because I had a video just like idea pop into my head and I'm like, the world has to know about this. And then I saw your Donkey Kong Jr. video. And I'm like, oh, like if you like you, if you wanted to make a full video out of this topic, here you go. And you're like, you're like, I think we're good on ideas, but like we, I could toss this I, just in a very polite way. I think we're fine. No, but then you, you put it on the YouTube shorts. Yeah. For so the hard drive channel. So it got more, more traction than it would have if I had done it. So I appreciate that. For the record, I've done that to everyone who's come with me tonight with an idea so far. Not because no one's a good idea, but because like I'm literally only three months into doing this thing, and like mm. you know, I, consistency is one thing, but I want like stability. Like I want the audience to know what to expect, which is right. why I'm not trying to throw too many people at the audience just yet. You know, we actually do have some mm. new people coming in to do some different stuff in the channel pretty soon, I believe. Um, oh, cool, cool. I, I like the idea of opening up the pitches a bit more and letting uh, more of the hard drive writers pitch ideas but just for the first six months or so i just kind of want to like you know set the set the foundation you know makes sense uh, yeah. and then we do need shorts all the time like so if any hard drive writers or any general funny video gamey people have uh little tiktoks and shorts and stuff they think would be funny i'm always happy to throw one up um 
one of the things I do aside from making the big hard drive videos is that I do I do YouTube shorts, I do TikToks and Instagram reels, which is just kind of me reading out some of the funnier hard drive articles in history. Actually, Kevin, you're one about Arlo being rejected from the Muppets went up today. I just saw that like an hour ago. I was like, ooh, good timing. I actually did uh, a Kermit impression for Kermit's <laughs> quotes. I wanted to ask you that. I'm like, I'm like, this is like pitch perfect. I'm like, is this was this like an AI Kermit thing, or did you actually do it? But you actually did it. Being Kermit the Frog is the one voice I can kind of do. Very nice, Jordan Peterson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or Jordan Peterson. Who? Yeah, Uh, it's it's nice to get a two in one. I was gonna say, yeah, Grant's got a pretty good Kermit too, or Jordan Peterson. Yeah, um, here I'll I'll do an impression of my Jordan Peterson right now. Um, Here, this. Oh no, I, I forgot I muted his his account because I got sick of seeing this. But uh he, he tweeted out this uh this v- like picture of it's uh I'm gonna say they put these types of things around like train stations and stuff like that where it's like okay, it's say, ice, ice builds up on the ground and they're like, Hey, if you wanna not slip and fall and crack your head open and die on ice, walk like a penguin and there's like a little picture of a penguin. They you know, whatever. Yeah, kinda cute. And he goes the bureaucrats are there to remind you how to walk. What a pathetic society we have produced. And it's like, dude, you wrote a book on uh, d- d- uh, you make your bed in the morning. Like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's pretty it's good. not even funny or endearing anymore. It's just like, dude, you. it was, but Don't yeah, it used to, to be. So you're saying it used to be funny and endearing and now it's like sort of like the Simpsons, no longer funny. <laughs> yeah. Same writers. Shit. Eventually, I think, uh, like fucking general morons on the internet get so big that they stop being funny or like Elon Musk. There's so much potential for ho- for humor and comedy there. And I just don't want to know about it anymore. You know, it's like run dry. I mean, yeah. like, I'm I mean, so over it. honestly, it kind of peaked after the whole, you know, I mean, I, I think I, after the whole thing with me, it right. was all downhill from there. Yeah. yeah, truly. Yeah. You know, Genuinely, like, um, obviously, hard drive kind of blew up off of off of Jeremy racially. Yeah, yeah, we got like a hundred thousand fucking followers like Hell that yeah. day. I think that was the funniest Elon related thing I've I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's. Yeah, I think, so, I, think yeah. I think Elon humor is peaked since watching him get ratio. No one will ever be able to ratio him like that again. Yeah, yeah. true. And if they do, it's just it's not funny anymore because it's like he has so many people against him and it's just, it's it's more pathetic than it's anything at this point like and you know like we reported on however many weeks ago it's like he's like fucking with the algorithm so that everyone has to see his shit so it's just like jamming it in your face and like the idea of like tweeting back like some sort of a sarcastic response is like this doesn't even do it for me I just yeah. I, I just blocked him. I don't need yeah. to see it. I hate it. I'm, I'm at the point now where, like, as a as a satirist and as a as a I don't know, I don't know if I call myself a comedian, but whatever the fuck I am, like, I'm you know, Kevin, you being in the hard drive slack and stuff and and yeah. podcast and stuff. Like, I'm sure you guys agree that like I'm I'm at the point now where I'm sick of Elon Musk and J.K. Rowling and Jordan Peterson, and I'm living for like the medium level controversy and beef. Like Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly broke up. I'm like, wow, real shit, you know? Because I'm that desperate. I'm that desperate. For yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we lost our Golden Goose Trump, you know? Yeah. Like that was like the one uh, for a long I think time. He's he's kind of back a little bit. Well, oh yeah, he went to Twitter, McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In his little MAGA hat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm living for like low level, medium level controversies. I saw a tweet today about um. Uh, there's a there's a there's an online Mortal Kombat 12 tournament series, and they're having a problem recently because this unknown player keeps showing up in their lobbies, playing random characters, beating the best players in the world, and then teabagging and leaving. <laughs> That's hilarious. And he'd watched it like that, you know. That's fucking awesome. They're having like an epidemic. The fucking cyber chase is getting into their tournaments and <laughs> wreaking havoc on it. It's great. And nobody knows who he is, or or they are. That's crazy. No. Nah. Um, I, um, that, that is sort of like our bread and butter. I feel like in this show, because yeah, sometimes you get into something cause it is like, I, I do care about a lot of things, but it's not funny to care about things, but also at the same time, you don't want to act too disaffected as to not like comment on it. So it's this fine line of like, do we talk about Elon Musk again this week? Or do we talk about the M and M's? Yeah. You know? <laughs> and it's like, the M and M's are. So I, I don't know. At least the M and M's are funny. Like it, it's stupid. It's not like 
Yeah, like even the idea of like dunking on J.K. Rowling, it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't find like a lightheartedness in like clapping back at someone who just can't help herself but to make transphobic comments nonstop. Well, it's like it's it's not. There's no Grant, content to be mined there. I, I disagree because I actually want to jump into a segment of the show here real quick oh, yeah, called ahead. Weird Comments. Because we put up a clip from last week where we talked about Elon Musk's Twitter. God help me. And again, I, I thought I'm like, you know, it'd be smart if I just typed hashtag Elon Musk in the description, because maybe I don't more even people- know 100 percent how well hashtags work, but it definitely we hit the wrong audience. That's <laughs> yeah, for sure. So this this section's called weird comments. But for this episode, I'm actually just going to call it mean comments. <laughs> uh, we got one here. It says. Imagine having nothing better to be concerned about than uh, other than someone not getting enough likes on their post. That was us talking about Elon not getting as many yeah. impressions as uh, Joe Brandon. Can, can I just do a quick uh, favor for the audience that maybe uh, is unfamiliar with our show if they haven't listened before and contextualize that a lot of times when we're setting up a story I will give the facts of the story and I'll, I'll throw a little bit of spicy whatever in there. You know, I did the thing where I was like, uh, uh, it's something along the lines of like Elon. Oh, Elon didn't get enough likes on his post. Uh, I thought he was paying for followers or something like that. I, yeah. I think people sometimes when they see these clips out of context, they think that what I'm saying is that like, huh, he's, he's buying fought. Like, I don't actually think that we're do we're like joking, but I, it, it like comes off as like, wow, look at these dudes talking about, uh, he's not getting enough likes. You're doing a podcast about this. And it's like, well, no, but yeah, whatever. I don't I mean, listen, that. listen to the other 90 fucking minutes. Yeah. Idiots. Yeah. That's actually going to lead into my, my jail segment where I fucking, wherever the segment is where I shoot someone off. Hell yeah, jail segment. Yeah, do fucking jail. Never did prison those, riot so. segment. Yeah, <laughs> I got some. I got some other good ones here. Uh, Jesus Christ. Dot dot dot. And people wonder why we want bullying back. Is that a thing? How you guys? Yeah, probably Kevin because he did the mask impression. I mean, maybe somebody. Somebody did say smoking. Not funny. Sorry. <laughs> That's the Fucking point. Got you. That's the point of the show. Okay. Well, again, it's it's hard to like it's anti humor. Yeah, it's it hard can't to be get. bad. Exactly. Yeah. That's a good point. And so uh, somebody says, "Ah, no wonder I've never heard of these people before. This sucks." Thanks, YouTube. You're welcome. And I finally, the algorithm. You know, for real, this one, this got out to a lot of people. And finally, uh, we have, okay, this is the best one. Somebody with a annoying orange avatar that <laughs> their avatar. Yeah. And their yeah. name is just Mr. Snooky lover said, uh, stop your podcast. <laughs> so I, I think, uh, from uh, future Mr. Snooky here, we might have to cut it off after this episode. Mm. Wow. The last man, me, the last ever episode. Thanks. Mr. <laughs> Snooky. The last, the final guest. Sad to say, but you know, and maybe Snooky put him up to it. Oh, you're missing one. You're missing a good one. Oh no, I'm sorry. There is one more here. Yeah, this is actually the meanest and weirdest one here. Yeah, it just says "boo" with five oh, exclamation man. marks. Who is I, this? I didn't mean Grant Mooney. I didn't mean that one. Uh huh. Should I should I read the other one? Is it worth it? I don't see it on. Is there no? Is well, there another so one? There's one. Some guy says, God, I, I fucking don't get like, who, who can't, whatever. Um, this guy says, uh, he works for his money and purchase. He works for his money. We all work for our money. What <laughs> yeah. the fuck does that mean? <laughs> work hard for it? Uh, he says he works for his money and purchased a business to give freedom of speech on that site. Dumb ass shit. He spelled dumb D U M. I think that says everything you need to say. You know, the thing that I like about weird comments as a uh, as a segment is uh, I've always I don't like the idea of coming into a microphone and, uh, you know, just uh, coming into a microphone. Because I don't like it either. It's all yeah. sticky, yeah, disgusting. I don't like coming on to a microphone. No, that doesn't nope. sound any better. I don't like being on a camera speaking into a microphone 
doing like a manifesto sort of thing. I, I do like a little, a little bit of feedback because then I can go, okay, well, what's the world around me like outside of I just uh, I log into Zoom and there's Kevin's face there. And then we just talk and then people go, oh, okay, this is what to think. It's, I, I don't want that. I always wanted for this show to be a little bit uh, backy and forthy, but, it, you know, we have the voicemails and one person leaves one a week and it's like, sometimes it's nice to get a little. Oh, a little come on. Sometimes it's two or three. The common, the common folk, uh, you know, leaving you some comments saying, uh, you know, uh, whatever. Kevin, your impression sucks or whatever this guy said. Really? I mean, I thought it was pretty good, but whatever. The thing is, the thing was... I've learned with like hate comments and stuff is that they're so much more common when the, when the person feels like they have like a direct line to you. So like, I feel like they are going to be so much more common on podcasts than almost any other kind of thing, because it's mm. literally, it's a very raw kind of essence of yourself. If you guys were like doing other stuff, like, like 30 minute videos where you like, I don't know. You, you guys talked about wanting to do other stuff in the, in the last podcast, right? I'd be, I'd be willing to bet you'd get, even if the same people were watching all of this stuff, you'd get more hate comments on a podcast than anything because people feel like they're getting to you most directly, if that makes sense. Could it does. Honest? Yeah. Yeah. I get a lot less hate comments on my videos than I do on like a community post, but I'm like, Hey, here's the thing that's actually going on in my real life. People are like this is my opportunity. Get him. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They drop right. all the hate on me there. And I'm like, what's what's the beef? I got a tattoo. I, you know, I got it's a picture of my cat. What are you so fucking angry about? And it's because they know there's like that. That's that's you in your like rawest essence. That's the place to attack. You know, Grant. I'm gonna try this theory. I'm gonna upload to the Thought Cops channel of an hour long video essay just called "The Fall of Barney: How It Happened." Honestly, you could. I I would. We could both write that if you want, or I could help you edit it or whatever. It's going to be a massive undertaking, but it's going to be worth it to show that we got zero comments and be like, see, mm -hmm. no, hey, we, Brad we was right. Proved you guys wrong or ourselves right. We somebody's wrong and it's not us. At the end of the day, we win. Yeah, I guess everyone is unanimously in agreement about the declining state of Barney. Yeah, especially if he goes woke. God. I mean, I'm worried about this new series. I mean, God help us. It might go, you know. I forgot that that was an actual tweet that uh, graced my eyeballs. The real ones. <laughs> um, within the, within the, the feedback section, though, I, I do want to highlight one positive comment. The only positive comment we've ever gotten um, on the Better Call Saul when you got stalled, Kevin. Yeah. Um, this guy, Korg Bloonku, says, I fucking love you guys without thought cops. My life would be a stupid pile of shit. So uh, thank you for the comment. We do yeah. appreciate a little bit of positivity now and then. I'd Not be, so much a weird comment, but just a good one. A comment, yeah. yeah. I'd be intimidated. That's like too much responsibility now. But like, well, now I can't bit, ever yeah. end thought cops. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. I was like, what am I going to do if this show ends? Like, is this guy <laughs> going right. off the deep end? It's got my responsibility now? Yeah, yeah. Uh, speaking of Saul, speaking of TV, though, I actually do have a two minutes of hate this week. Um, Go off, King. So this is actually something like weirdly enough. I, I think it was like the most recent or at least one of the most recent episodes of the Mega 64 podcast. They were having a discussion about like streaming services where you finish an episode of a show and the second the credits hit, it's like up next, up next. Yeah. Here's what to click on and watch the next thing. Like there's no room to breathe, you know? It's like the the default is to go to next. It's not even like, hey, do you want to do you want to skip this and you want to go next? It's just like, hey, yeah. we're we're already fucking wrapping up. Uh, get like Amazon together. Prime, Amazon Prime. It's like not even just like hit the button if you want to go to the next one. It's just like ten, right. nine, right, right, eight. Yeah, they're all doing that. Yeah, and it's super annoying because it's like sometimes you finish watching something and you just kind of want to absorb it for a second and breathe and not have it just be like, here you go, here's something else, here's something else. It, so it's the TikTokification of everything. Yeah, yeah. I think you're right. Cause in, I had the most egregious example happen to me the other night. I was watching the movie psycho. I never seen it before. I uh, was watching it on a uh, fucking peacock because I have a free peacock subscription with my uh, internet service. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, amazing movie, really impactful. And about 10 seconds before the credits even start, like oh, no. it was like i don't know if you guys have seen the movie i'm not going to spoil it but there is like a, a very like 
horrifying, impactful shot at the very end of the movie. And before that even started, how can a big psycho? Yeah, I know it's an old movie, yeah. but <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. There's a psycho I, in it. Yeah. Ah, oh, shit. Uh, but then this, like, before the last scene with the the titular psycho is on the screen, there's a big uh button to click on and a countdown for Bates Motel, like the the TV series. It's like a spinoff of the movie, uh, and it was like the movie's in black and white, and this big like you know color image pops up for like up next Bates Motel season one episode one and it's like the movie's not even over yet honestly like what concerns me more is the fact that they've made like a fucking Bates cinematic universe now they're like I know I know psycho guy give him a show I mean like the Bates Motel is like hold on I'm gonna see when that came out it's been out for a while I don't know how yeah I was gonna say because it's like I, I usually associate like that kind of stuff with uh, 2013 mm. so it's it's like it came out like 10 years ago so i feel like it was before the big boom of like everything has to be like a cinematic universe but not quite predating yeah. all of it you know right it's like we have like the the fargo tv show which that's good like obviously there's exceptions to the rules it's like like i said better call saul a prequel that's actually good uh fargo a spin-off tv show of a movie that's actually good i haven't seen bates motel but now i don't want to because it was shoved in my face at the spite, end of Psycho. Yeah. yeah, out of extreme spite. Yeah. It, it, it is, I, was, I was listening to the podcast last week and uh, the guy on it, Frank, kind of like, yeah. I, 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 I envisioned myself talking a lot about TikTok and the state of content this week. And he kind of mm. said a lot of the stuff I was going to say, or the opposite. He actually kind of like convinced me, he kind of brought me around on TikTok, the way he was talking about like neo sincerity and, and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I feel quite a lot less hateful towards TikTok now as a result of having listened to him. However, the nonstop barrage of content in your face is like a very real epidemic. It is demonstrably destroying our attention span. You know, the, the human attention yeah. span yeah. overall has dropped something like 12.5% in the last 10 years. That's insane. Um, and it's because, you know, getting bombarded with stuff at the time. You know, I think... There's, there's so many depictions of the future in media. I can genuinely say I think the most accurate depiction of what the future will ever look like is actually the last act of Wally. You know, when like they're all carting around in these mobility scooters with screens, you know, faces <laughs> yeah. all the time. Yeah, yeah. Advertisements on everything. You know, Wally fucking knows what's up. Not Great so movie. Any other movie. Um, like, I don't know if you've ever used um, a dating app, but I happen to know through osmosis and general knowledge that. They are basically built like TikTok, you know, like so much of it is don't like this first thing in the first second swipe, new thing. Don't like yeah. this thing, first second swipe, new thing. It's insane. Have it's you actually seen, crazy. They have like a dating show that is <clears throat> that now. Have y'all seen that where it's uh, two people sit across from each other at a table and there's just a big red buzzer in the middle? No, oh my go, God. Yeah, literally. Oh, it's like, think- uh, so are you into and someone goes, I don't like you. Like, that's it. That's the whole fucking show. I feel like it's one thing for it to be like anonymous on an app. Right. But if it's like to your face, like, eh, wrong, fuck you. It's like the, uh, people don't even get through like the first, like, hey, how are you doing? Yeah. What are you asking me that for? Yeah. <laughs> Cringe. Insulting. Cringe. Very invasive. Yeah. You think you know me? Yeah. No, that's why I'm asking. <laughs> like to, I like to get to know you. Eh, wrong. Wrong I'm answer. Right Holding now. me on a pedestal. Mm. Problematic. Red flag. Yep. yep, yep. There's um a dating show in the UK that's kind of popped off called I think it's called Love Is Blind or Blind Attraction or something where like you. Oh yeah, there's. We have or one of those, attraction, yeah. maybe I don't know. Basically, uh, you literally like pick people out based on their naked bodies and don't see their face. Oh, we have the opposite of well. Oh, okay, that's a completely different thing then. I guess. Well, maybe I, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't fucking watched it if you can believe it. But like, it's it's crazy shit like that. You know, like judge an entire person based on a limited view of their physical aspect, also nudity. Right. Yeah. There's there's one in uh, America, and I think a couple other countries too. I think that they have like a Japanese one and a Brazilian one, but it's called Love Is Blind, and it's basically the, the Japanese it, one. They go, they dip them into a tub of lava at the end. <laughs> Is that actually a thing? I always like I always heard about that with Japanese like reality shows are so cruel and I never like have seen well, one. It's it's weird because uh 
comparatively the the Japanese version of the show is like very like respectful and wholesome and okay. like the American versions just like well until the scorpions come out disgusting and vulgar yeah um but uh no it's it's the thing is it's got to be like one of the cheapest shows to produce because it basically like you just stick a bunch of cameras in a warehouse and like people don't interact with each other you just stick someone in a room and then someone else is in another room you don't get to see each other and then uh it's just like hey do you want to marry the person on the other side of the wall you don't get to look at them and of course it's all just like instagram like model looking people so it's like love is blind but uh, i have a hundred thousand followers in my modeling gig and so it's like uh, this is a stupid premise for a show it's all pomp and circumstance i struggle to imagine any yes you know it's it's reality shit whatever but um yeah, to your to your point about like being bombarded with credit credits and stuff, Kevin. I guess what I'm saying is like I think we all agree that like everything dating shows, reality shows, apps is getting faster because your time is like the economy now. Yeah, you know? mm-hmm. time is money and all that shit. Um, not not I mean kind of vaguely related, but um, there's a uh, they still do gong comedy shows. You know? Oh, in Japan? In in Britain, in England? Oh, in Japan, okay. I went to one. Um, I was talking to, uh, I used to go to these open mics, mic nights quite a lot. And I was talking to this guy about, he'd gone to the gong once and hated it, uh, as a spectator and as a comedian, because it's not real comedy. You're not like you go up and you have to try and, um, make people laugh for five minutes. And if they don't like you, they gong you off. Um, but like, mm-hmm. that is just, don't take your time. No setup, no context, joke, 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 joke. And if you stop at any point, they gong you off. It's shit. It's, it's like a reality show. It's like, a, right. it's, it's TikTok. It's, it's all this stuff. It's just instant gratification all the time. This one guy apparently went up. It was a ventriloquist. He had a puppet. Um, and they literally gonged him off before he could speak. I mean, I, I can't blame them. I mean, <laughs> me neither, but still it's cruel, isn't it? It is cruel. Yeah. Um, I, I will say, uh, sort of in line with, Uh, everything that you just said um i heard someone that uh i was scrolling through tiktok mindlessly for uh 13 hours one day and i saw this video by a woman that was like a social media like specialist or something like that and she was like uh tiktok is not trying to compete with like instagram for your views and for your attention span they're trying to compete with netflix Mm. because instead of sitting there and watching a series and watch it, they want you to be on the app for four hours, you know? And I, I think that it works. I think that a lot of these things very much. So it's like there, there is like a addictive tendency to it. And I think that Mm. there's a lot of good stuff that you can find on there. And there's obviously, yeah, it is hugely detrimental in that regard. Yeah. I mean, then it's like, yeah, if you compare it to Netflix, it's like, so I'm just sitting here and I'm not being like interacted with constantly. I'm bored. I'm turning this movie off. Yeah. And like, I, I really liked what Frank was saying on the last podcast about like the neo sincerity of this current generation. Mm-hmm. And uh, he did bring me around on TikTok quite a lot. But what I do hate about TikTok is what it's doing to your attention span. Where do you go from one minute videos? Where do you go from an app that is one minute videos? I mean, 30 seconds, you know, back to Vine, one word. You know, like, yeah, I I have no idea. It's like, is this the at uh, is this the peak of this the, the zenith of like how quick we can make content and put it out there? Because I don't like you said. I what, what's quicker, like a second, five seconds? That feels like too short. But also TikTok felt too short. A minute it feels too felt too short yes. at one point. Yes, that like is, the risk of being like boomer comedian guy who's like the next generation is going to walk around with their face in their screens. Is the next app going to be literally people going? Bleh! And then the next one, bleh, 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 <laughs> you know, I actually kind of like that. You get one of <laughs> <laughs> it's all funny faces. Who doesn't like funny faces? <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm, I'm kind of coming around myself. Who yeah. <laughs> 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 can do the best? With <laughs> Everyone gets one expression. <laughs> oh man, through. And it's just that would, that would fucking kill a kid. Thousands brother. of strangers on the internet just <laughs> screaming at you. <laughs> oh man, oh, we, could, we could be fucking millionaires, man. Let's make this happen. God. Oh man. Um, the next Facebook, a literal that, book of faces that you flip through. 
<laughs> that has been, uh, I feel like part of the reason why, uh, cause I'm, I'm on TikTok a lot and I feel like I've been struggling to, to break through because there, there's basically two methods to like making videos, which is one, you keep creating the same video over and over and over again. And you just sort of switch around the content, but like mm-hmm. you have to do within the first three seconds, you put your opening line in and then you do this and then you expand upon this. And then at the end, make sure that you tell them to like, and subscribe for Yeah. That, that sort of thing where there's a formula and stuff like that. You can keep creating the same thing or you get bored with that and you, try and do some different stuff and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't but i was like fucking around with like oh you know it'd be funny if i make a really long video and like at the end of it it's like oh this was the family matters theme song or something like that but it's like people scroll away from that type of stuff like it's it's very hard to do like anti humor without like punching like pieing someone in the face with like the anti humor which like grates on me after a while where it's like i'm being unfunny aren't i funny and it's like no it's not fucking funny i mean that's what i do for like the reels and shorts and stuff for the podcast i'm like i got i want to like have an image on screen right like as soon as possible because it's like people are gonna make "Eh, yeah exactly exactly yeah and so like what i've been sort of doing um since i feel like that's not working for me is i have been like writing more because it's like if if i can't like get these types of jokes out on this platform in this way. I, I almost feel like it's easier for me to like do the exact opposite. And like, here's a thing where you have to have an attention span to, to like read it and engage with it and think about it and respond to it. And so maybe, maybe we're heading back in that direction. Maybe one day people are going to go, I can't stand these five second long face videos of people screaming at me. I want to read a nice article about uh, poo poo. Uh, I, I like to think we will. Now we're talking. We will, but like, it's not so much that we're going to go back, that we're going to go forward and loop, but in with like a new twist. We're in like post, post irony. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What even is sincerity <laughs> in comedy anymore? How do you achieve it? <laughs> like then you were like we're in post post irony and Kevin are like of course yeah, yeah I, uh, absolutely I, 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 yeah. I, oh god I I I was which I was, is neo sincerity of course of yeah, course yeah yeah uh, I I am um, since I've I've started using TikTok myself now to post these hard drive shorts and stuff and and starting mm-hmm. to use the app I've seen like we really are in cyberpunk dystopia you know and if if we're not then we're very close um like and people like I, that game so sorry people like that game cyberpunk. Yeah, no, true. So I, I guess it's okay then. Um, I, I like seeing TikTok has, has has just kind of like blown my mind a little bit because um, it, it, it's got me thinking about how like the biggest people, the people who get the biggest on social media platforms like YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook and stuff, they're very rarely ever actually the best. They're the people who were there first. You know, they got in early yeah. and they got big mm-hmm. early. And I've kind of started to realize that we're in this cycle now where a new social media platform pops up every few years and there's a gold rush. Starts off, you've got to get in early, get big, and then you rule it for the next five years until it fucking implodes, right? Snapchat is like slowly eroding. Do you remember musical.ly? Yeah, that was, that was vaguely. Year? So that Probably was before died. before TikTok was around. Um, I think we were making fun of uh, music.ly clips on this show actually oh, and that's that I what that is heaven some of them and then every time i was like oh kevin you should check out tiktok he's like i don't want to be what i don't want to be one of those people that's on an app where someone's dressing up like rick from rick and morty is singing boulevard of broken dreams because like when you said you were on tiktok i'm like that's what you're doing on there man yeah man it's fun it's so, rick i kind of like uh you know some social media platforms stick around longer than others like facebook and twitter but i think facebook is is going the way of the dodo pretty soon um and yeah probably what i'm realizing is that i i think this is my prediction i think we're in what i call late stage tiktok like <laughs> i think tiktok's got like another year or two for people to get big and then it's on to the next thing which will hopefully be people making stupid faces and go Bleh! i mean god willing yeah so like, I just imagine like a doctor like saying this like yeah this is a late stage TikTok you have you have six months le- you have six months left to promote yourself <laughs> you only have six months left I'm just thinking that uh, Kant's over here listening to this podcast rolling in his fucking grave what are these fucking pseudo intellectual statements that we're all talking about 
He's listening. I was just not earlier, yeah. so I apologize for my pretentiousness. But I'm also right. <laughs> That's fine. That it comes with the territory of being pretentious. Yeah, it's like I'm pretentious, but I'm fucking right. Okay. Yeah. If you that's, didn't that's the whole that, bit of fudge in my heart. Yeah. Track. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Grant, did you did you have a TikTok made for me this week? Uh, um, I know you. The, I maybe I I might understand the sec- the segment a little bit better this time. If you want to try me. Oh the oh shit no I didn't look up uh, a reddit post i'm gonna open reddit right now and just uh see if there's no nah, this one sucks no nah, i don't have one this week i'll i'll do my homework next time okay because i want to be like oh dude no way yeah, just act me, like i'm on ridiculousness basically let me uh here i'll you say something else and i'll try and find something and, uh, uh say something else let's see what else do I, i'm just scrolling back and forth in the dock here um well actually no you know grant you got this thing here in the a youtube video now do you want to watch that i think that this segment might be better than watching that but okay yeah well let's let's do the segment then here i um i, I got a good one i think um okay this is here, let me let me set this up properly, okay, so that uh, we have like a good a good thing to clip here for when we make a clip of us talking clap. about this. Um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Um. So I got this from uh, Reddit. I got this from Ask Reddit. Uh, this this user says, "If you suddenly became a billionaire, what's the first thing you would buy?" I'd probably buy a fucking Ferrari, 10 Ferraris. All right. A bunch of followers. Shit like that. Good. Is that good? Uh, Yeah. uh, Fudge, what what would you uh, I think, uh, oh man, I'm really put on the spot right now. I reckon, I mean, I'd love to start the app where we make faces and make silly noises, but I also, uh, I think of how many people have got sad and depressed when they've gotten rich. Uh, so maybe I would buy one small thing that would give me continued happiness and then give the rest of the money to charity. Like maybe I would get uh, something silly, like a little donkey, you know, or, uh, or uh, get an extra room. Ad. This isn't funny at all, uh, but... Oh, this segment is not meant to be funny. I'm just thinking uh, <laughs> so many people get so depressed when they get rich. I don't actually want a billion dollars, you know? I want I want a sea little donkey, nice little house by myself, and uh, some good cush. How about you, bro? Grant, would you get a donkey or what? If you had a million dollars, it was a bi- a billion dollars. If you had a you billion dollars, would you get ten donkeys? Um, I would buy one hundred horse-sized ducks. <laughs> What you should do is you should you should buy the arms with which to take on the dark sized horse. <laughs> yeah, that's how much you're going to need. Let's be real here. So this is uh, that's the end of that segment. If if you can't discern, that's uh, so we can make a clip of that because uh, I I sent Kevin a couple videos because we're thinking like how do how do we get you know the same way that you're talking about with the hard drive stuff how do we get eyes on this so that people more people are seeing it more people are interacting with it yeah and we have this long form podcast where it's it's funny in waves and it's funny in these long durations of these conversations that were happen that we're having and it, it's hard to be like okay we need a a solid minute of like how do we d- distill everything we're talking down into into a minute yeah. And that's the wrong way to go about it. That's the wrong way to go about it because when you're scrolling TikTok and you see videos of podcasts, they're just asking Reddit questions. They're reading, Am I the asshole? Oh, someone uh killed their neighbor's cat and just bought him a new cat and never told him. Can you guys believe it? And it's just these like fucking idiots with these dumb haircuts going, Oh no, oh, they did they didn't write that. And it's like it's fake. It's Man. fake. They didn't actually yeah. do that. That no one does that. That doesn't happen. And you're sitting there pantomiming like a, a surprised expression. You're not. You didn't even write the post. You're just reading someone else's content. 
this is the part where we reveal that this whole segment has actually been a post post bit where our inability exactly. to come up with funny answers to the Reddit question was a commentary on the fucking pointlessness exactly. and the lack of creativity in asking these questions in the first place. Of You've course. all been top viewers. You sat there thinking, oh, that wasn't very funny. No, it wasn't, was it? Because there's shit. Get better taste. Exactly. So we're going to put that on TikTok and see how it does. Woo! Can't wait. Remind me to do that, Grant. Just um, throw it in the shit machine and churn it into shit butter that's what the shit machine does <laughs> churning that butter that is churning that poo poo butter Grant, do you want to do you want to watch this video or no do you want to how much i don't know what, do I don't know what it is because we could just go to the voicemail uh it's really it's it was like fucking stupid it's someone like at a <laughs> awards show did like a dumb thing and then people were ragging on it but then they were like oh actually maybe it's not cringe um you know what fuck okay. it let's I, i'm gonna i'm gonna pull it up you you twisted my arm now we have didn't to, didn't have, to didn't have to twist very hard but all right i struggle not to cringe at award shows that like non-stop so this would be well it. you're gonna struggle even harder right now and this is from uh what the, the oh, 76 this is the, this is the um best supporting actress nominees isn't it yeah um okay. this is yeah. An award show called uh, BAFTA. I think that stands for uh, it's, a, it's a British thing. Yeah, yeah, bad ass fucking, fucking awards. T addicts, right? which is us. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, the so, bad ass uh, fucking T addicts awards, babies. So this is uh, this is what the kids are uh, into nowadays. Is yeah. this? Uh, there's going to be a, a specific thing in here that's going to be very important. Um, it's it's a line that a lot of millennials use. Uh, you'll you'll pick up on it. You'll see which one. But the whole thing's going to be painful. But there's going to be one moment in particular. So is this new to you, Kevin? You haven't seen this yet. Kevin? I, I have not seen it. I just saw it on the Google Doc. And yeah, that's my like, favorite thing is uh, introducing Kevin to like Zoomer shit, like uh, yeah. like uh, hitting the gritty and watching his mind melt. Um, so this is going to be pretty similar to that. Hopefully, um, here we go. Stay your pal without fellowship. Costume queen, can you fix this zip? All the ladies in the room, supporting and leading, all here I presume. Home child, Dolly D. Carrie and Carrie with the C. Say, Mama, I'm so fond. And a girl, you were great and long. Danielle D, you broke my heart. Michelle, I loved you from the start. Angela Bassett did the thing. Viola Day, Carmen <laughs> King. Blanche K, you're a genius. And Jamie Lee, you are all of us. That's it. Oh, Jamie Lee Curtis is loving it. Yeah. She's, she's just about just, the only one. Yeah. She's just being nice. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's, there's a lot, I think, when even actors can't hide. <laughs> <laughs> the point of that is that they are actors and they're good at acting and they can't pretend to like what's happening. Yeah. It would make me uncomfortable if somebody was like, had a little verse about me in their song. Right. And there's that little like weird shimmy with Angela Bassett uh, did the thing and people are globbing onto that. And at first people are like, wow, this is terrible. But you know, then there was the point where people are like, is it though? It's, it's kind of what the kids are calling a bop. So, you know, is this, are we going to give a verdict? Is this, is this cringe or unironically good? Cause uh, you know, I mean, if we're going to go back to the theory of neo sincerity, then maybe this is just neo sincere. Maybe it is just good guys. Maybe we should pull the sticks out of our asses. I was just thinking, it, it, there's no chance this doesn't come back around to neo sincerity, where it's think, like, oh, this I is so lame. Already, I think it already sort of maybe. Ha- I honestly, I don't know. I think. <laughs> Let me ask you this: new, This is the new the dress. You know, is it one thing or is it everyone sees something different? Grant, are people on TikTok doing this dance? Hmm. Well, then it's yeah. people, people like have them. already made T-shirts with the lines that she said and dancing while wearing t shirts Lizzo at a concert. Yeah, Angela Bassett. OK, so it, yeah. people do. They do now like it. Maybe but they made like, fun of it, it at first. Is it irony or is it post irony? I feel like post irony. I feel like if you're if you're doing 
doing the dance and Lizzo's doing it at a concert and you're selling t-shirts and all this stuff. I'm not I selling t-shirts. Like people just made t-shirts so that they could make that a means they love it so much. They're, they're not even making a profit from this. They love it. Yeah. I, I, I think this is actually, I think this is just a case of people wanting to be nice. I wanted to support her knowing that it was really quite bad. You think so? People are like going on TikTok and doing the dance. A and lot being of people like, are saying slay queen. So I, I don't know what that means, but I think that it's good. I, yeah, no, never mind. It's ironic. It's ironic. <laughs> I don't know. I feel, I try not I, to feel old and I just say things like that and it's uh, harmful to myself. It is. It's, it's the classic like Trump getting in, parody died, satire died. You know, this woman is just genuinely good now. You know, yeah. this woman is genuinely fun. Watch it. I'm just like, oh, it's just a bit, of, bit of a weak performance. You know, like vocally, she's not very good. Yeah. And moves are a bit weird. But like the the current generation, I don't know. Like they just see things differently. You know. Like it's not eyes. like I'll be honest. I don't actually even have a strong opinion on the video. It, it's just like it's kind of embarrassing. I just yeah. I don't know. Like, yeah. there's definitely worse things out there, you know, to be like, oh boy, how yeah, embarrassing. We literal Nazis again. I don't really care about a video, but yeah. um, yeah. I mean, nobody got slapped, so <laughs> like, yeah. Like, um, singing the names of the nominees, that was like an award show, like, uh, like staple once upon a time, right? A few years ago. I, I think, think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think Maybe Aubrey Plaza did a like throwback. a. You know? similar-ish thing a couple of years ago maybe too in that yeah. sort of old style like not a weird pseudo rap but like uh you know come yeah. on get happy sort of whatever come on and get happy uh speaking of which let's jump to our listener voicemails uh, we got one amazing voicemail we want to play this week uh if this inspires you give us a call 312-788-7361 or you can always send us an audio file to thought cops podcast at gmail.com hit it uh, hey guys it's it's frank Halley from the big dogs i just wanted to thank you guys again for having me on the podcast and there was one more thing i forgot to mention oh uh, this is hard for me to admit but one time i was molested by a dolphin i'm not saying i didn't like it i'm just saying okay. <laughs> anyways thanks for listening i feel better getting that off my chest peace love and recycle you didn't have to, but uh, no, that that yeah, would have been good for the doing? that would have been good for the TikTok bait. What? Awesome! That why awesome we, sauce, actually. Why we do podcasts? He's just like that's Grant. That was wild, bro. Did you really get molested by a dolphin? Oh, it's not, what? it's not on Reddit. See if he oh. if he goes. Am I the asshole? I got molested by a dolphin once. Um, you know, then then we'll talk. I'm I'm googling it. Let me see. Googling if that's on Reddit. I don't think that it is. Am I the asshole? I was a dolphin, and I saw this guy Frank. <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on. I yeah, think you're I'm the asshole. Yeah. Okay, there is. Well, I found an AMA. It says request someone who has been raped by a oh dolphin. What the fuck, man? What? I know that it's just that the internet is just full of people that just think the wrong thoughts. But like, what is? Also, this is from Reddit? eleven years ago, so that's probably why they're. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Actually, I'm actually finding a lot of like TIL like dolphins. You know, yeah, yeah, it's bad. Today I learned. Thanks for the gold, kind stranger. Thank you for the gold and the voicemail, Frank. Yeah, always nice to hear from a uh, a guest on the show. You know, yeah. Have an updo. Have an updo, and if you guys want an updo, if you guys want some kind gold, stranger, uh, give us a call three one two seven eight eight seventy three sixty one, or send us an audio file to thoughtcopspodcast at gmail dot com. Uh, you can also support the show over at patreon.com slash thought cops, get a backlog of our bonus content and uh, contribute to the shows. Uh, everything, man, it helps us, it helps keep the show going. We buy microphones and all this fun stuff, you know, wouldn't be here. We wouldn't even have a video for the show if it weren't without you guys. Honestly. Yeah. And I want to give a shout out to actually with the person who donated one of the webcams to us, uh, Dr. White on oh, Twitter. Thank you very much. Who has been a patron since August of 2020. Thank you. Friend Mike. Mike White. Not that's not his name, but 
He's also not a doctor either. Yeah, our uh, our good friend, the guy who wrote White Lotus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, and he was Jack Black's roommate on School of Rock. Yeah, and he wrote Orange County, which I've never seen. Orange County. What is that? TV it's show with Jack Black. No, it's a movie from oh. like the early two thousands. I think it's with Tom Cruise's son, also not the Jamaican one, the other one. You mean Tom Hanks? What did I say? Tom Cruise? Yeah. Stupid, it's, stupid. It's, <laughs> delete the episode. Oh crap! Did I miss a memo about Chet Hanks being Jamaican? Well, he thinks he is. <laughs> well, Does so. he actually? I, I, if you can believe it, I tuned out after White Boy Summer. It's so uh, he, um, he got hit in the head by a coconut. And now he thinks <laughs> <laughs> he I'm not right um, the, the Chet Hanks multiverse. We we talked about it a little on an episode, uh, but there was like a there was a point in time where I didn't know who this was. Um, I didn't know like oh yeah, Tom Hanks has kids, but it's like I didn't know what his kids were up to or anything like that because I I don't care about famous people at all. Yeah. And um, but it was like oh Tom Hanks' son sure is weird, and it was like a video of him like just doing like a Jamaican accent, and I was like. Oh well, he probably grew up there. And I was like, no, <laughs> yeah. he's he's not Jamaican. That's Tom Hanks' son. You fucking yeah. idiot. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, he just does an accent. So. Uh, J- Jamaica is like a really weird. Uh, it's a it's a weirdly common victim of cultural appropriation. Like Adele got into some heat a while ago for wearing the Jamaican flag on like a bikini or something and having her hair braided in like a certain way. Oh. Um. Ed Sheeran did that big song where he does like a Jamaican. There's a song I can't remember what it's called, but Jama- Ed Sheeran literally just does a whole verse in like a Jamaican accent for some reason. I remember listening to it thinking, this is, "Oh my god, why is that? This is so weird. Why has no. no one said anything about this?" Did you ever will. see uh, Adrian Brody get kicked off of SNL? Yes, I have. What is this? Adrian Brody, like, um, who's the guy that did the? Uh, Red-handed, no girl next door. That that song. What the fuck is the name of that? <coughs> Shaggy. Shaggy. Shaggy was on the musical guest for an episode of SNL where Adrian Brody was the host, and he put on a big wig full of like dreadlocks and was just doing full blown accent, like you know how we talk about like uh, oh well things you know you can't judge things from before back then because everyone's smarter about race and stuff now it was not okay then like every everyone was like dude you cannot do that is too much and also you're doing it in front of these guys that are from there you're just yeah. insulting them to their faces and so he was never allowed back on SNL again oh my and the God. best the best part of that clip is like nobody's laughing <laughs> yes <laughs> dead silent yes yeah like not not that being a certain type of white guy makes it better but adrian brody <laughs> yeah he's yeah. like white white <laughs> painful that's crazy uh brad can you tell us uh or rather tell our listeners where we can find all of your wonderful content on the world wide web yeah so currently i am operating the hard drive mag youtube channel it used to be just hard drive but i've i've changed it to hard drive mag because it's a little bit better for seo if people look up easy easier to find drive, they just find hard drives so yeah. hard drive mag youtube channel um we're about twenty six thousand subscribers right now uh up about 5k from the past few months pretty happy with that um i did stuff and still do occasional like little bits and stuff here uh on the fudge channel it's f-u-d-j pink seal uh i'm on twitter at nocturnal fudge uh again f-u-d-j uh and sometimes i stream at nocturnal fudge as well i'm actually going to be doing some uh, dark souls 3 never played it before totally blind in a couple of days and i've got a new video going up on the hard drive mag youtube channel literally tomorrow literally once i'm finally finished with here I'm going to pop into Sony Vegas at the last five minutes of a Yakuza Kiwami video. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I'm a big fan of Yakuza. I've been talking about it almost every episode lately. Okay. Um, well, so I'll be checking that out for sure. I feel, I feel badly out of time for it not being the uh, the Samurai one, but you know, we, if you good. can believe it, we don't get review codes. Yeah. <laughs> yet. No, yet. 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 So, uh, yeah, that's where you can find me. I'd, I'd greatly appreciate it, especially the hard drive mag is currently my baby. So uh, go ahead and check out the stuff I've been doing. I've been very, very pleased with um, the creative freedom I've been given by, by Matt and Jeremy. It's been awesome working with them. Having a great time. I'm going to ride it till the wheels fall off. Well, I, I was going to say, too, I, I do like the little cameos from like uh, Jeremy and Mark in those videos. Yeah, I, I wanted yeah. to make sure that I wasn't just 
making it all about me all the time you know like mm-hmm. those guys they started it They're, they are hard drive yeah yeah for sure for sure well thank you so much for coming on the show man glad we we're able to arrange this uh time zones and all much appreciated um yeah uh like i said leave us a voicemail 312-788-7361 and we will see you on the other side side. (laughs) see you space cop